Let's not listen to you. There's mm. a few players to hear about in terms of Domingos, Ryan Yates and a few others. Just how are they? Yeah, uh, like we said, ongoing. Um, uh, Nico obviously came off um, uh, in the Brentford game uh, with, with a hamstring and uh, Yates has been nursing um, a, a niggly hamstring as well yeah. for, for a few weeks now and that's um, really uh, forced him from, from not getting on, on the pitch. Um, so, um, yeah, we'll see with regards to, 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 to the weekend. But, um, you know, whatever we decide that we can go with through availability, we'll, we'll be as ready as we can be and, um, and commit to the game as best we can. And just a few others, Nuno Tavares, Danilo, mm. Olaina, how are they? Yeah, um, like I said, they're they, uh, uh, injured. And um, um, Danilo's obviously a bit more long-term and he, he's still going to be a little while before he's back with the group. He is out on the grass. Um, but but very much in the middle of his of his rehab. Um, Nuno, I don't think we'll see until after the international break, and uh, and Ola, we'll see. Thank you. Uh, moving on to just defensive improvements, Steve. I want to ask you. You know, seven games in, you've conceded seven less goals in this stage last mm. season. And considering the opposition, you've played City, United, Arsenal. I mean, do do you feel there's been an improvement defensively, no matter who you put back there? Um, well, well, it's, it's something obviously that um, that we needed to improve, and it's still very early days. And um, I think when we got to the latter stage of of the season last last season, um, goal difference was completely out of our favour, and that was our our doing. And obviously, scoring goals and conceding goals is is what contributes to that. And and we conceded too too many goals. So so if at the moment the trend is is that we we're, we're not conceding. Um, too many, then that's obviously a positive. But um, it's only a positive if you keep it going, and um, you know to to keep clean sheets and to um, sort of minimise opponents to 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 chances uh, to not many chances. It's uh, it's a hard thing to do, and it's built really on um, you know determination and desire from um, from the goalkeeper all the way to to the guys at the top end of the pitch, and a real sort of um, strategic plan that includes everybody and um, we know that you, you know you can't de- you know you can't defend with six seven eight players everybody has to be involved and and you know we realized quickly that to give yourselves the best chance of, of not conceding then you have to play with 11 players and um, you know that's what we, we try and do with with them without the ball very much about the, the collective and how we're trying to play and um, you know, if there's been a decent st- or better start than, than than that than last season, then then uh, then good. But it's only good if you keep it going. So we we've got to work even even harder on the week weekend. You know, we're going away from home, Crystal Palace. You know, they they um, really tough place to go with the atmosphere that's created there and the players that they have. And um, you know, we've we've got to be right on it on that part of the game to make sure that we we um, do whatever we can to to, to minimise them. I just wanted to ask about one player in particular in Morello. Yeah. You've spoken a lot about how it's an individual case for mm. the new signings, especially outside mm. of the Premier League. So what did you make of his performance against Brentford and how has he adapted to life? Well, I thought as a, as a, as a debut goes, I thought he was, he was excellent overall. Um, like, like I've said on, on many occasions, you know, we learned quickly last year that uh, whatever players have done when they come to the Premier League for the first time, they, there's an, an adaptation Period, um, but but the best the best way to adapt is to play games, and we felt there was an opportunity that we could we could play him. He's really really impressed in in training. He's a really young player, particularly for for the position that he plays. So to um, to do some of the good things that he did in the game is is promising. Uh, but it's only one game, and and of course so far so good. Um, but um, if he gets an opportunity again, then. Um, um, then you know, hopefully he can build on last week and 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 keep going. What I would say is he's he's um, he's got a great attitude to training, a great attitude to learning. He, he's um, he's settled in quickly and on and off the pitch, and I think that's a good thing considering about where he's where he's come from and and, and his age. And um, and okay, he's got a few um, companions in, in the likes of Danilo and you know, great role model in in Felipe. Um, so, um, so he's got a nice little network around him, and um, you know we're really enjoying our, our, our work with him. But it's it's very much at the start. There's no doubt he's an exciting talent, um, and we really hope that we can help him develop to to be the best he can be.
There's been a lot of discussion this week, Steve, outside the football on the pitch about mm. VAR. After yeah, of course, yeah. Liverpool Tottenham game. Mm. Just wondering if you've heard the audio between the refs and what did you make of it? Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, I can't say um, I've absolutely studied it. I, I think that, that the whole situation is, is an unfortunate one, of course, and, and hopefully, you know, a one off and a, a unique situation. You have to obviously feel sorry for, for Liverpool, and I, th I don't think anybody would wish that on, on themselves. Um, and uh, you know, I I don't know how it's going to be sort sorted out, and it's not really anything that we can comment on or get get involved in. Um, we through since Howard Webb's got the job, has asked for more communication and feedback, transparency, and all that sort of stuff, and we very much try to to commit to that through times where we feel that we've been on the end of maybe some poor decision making, and even. Some things that, that have been normal or have got, gone our way. We still want to be quite um, um, authentic in, in how, we, how we feed back. So we're very much committing to that to, to hopefully um, allow refereeing to be at the level it needs to, to be at, which will help the game. So, um, so yeah, let's, let's hope things settle down, of course. I repeat, really unfortunate situation. And... Um, and you know, let's let's like I said, let's hope things things can can improve and be a lot quieter for for the refs going forward. Just finally, from me, Jurgen Klopp said yesterday in his press conference that he thinks the only fair way to move forward is a replay of the game. Just as a general concept, do you think that's the way to go in the future? If there is, I'm not sure mistake? to be fair, and I think that that's um, I don't think that's uh, uh, like I said, it's a really unfortunate situation for for Liverpool, and you, you do have to you know sympathise with them on, on, in that that moment and um, I repeat you know we would hate for something like that to, to happen to to us you, you feel hard done by anyway with normal decision making and you know I think we've been on the wrong and right end of some of them no, no doubt about that but that that is hopefully um, a, a one-off what it means to, to, to the question I'm not too sure about I think that's something that will be taken up at a higher level than, than me and um, and we'll see see what happens. But I say again, it, it's it's uh, you know a really unfortunate situation. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Dan. Hi, Hi Steve. Evan. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, yeah, you touched on the defensive side of things. Mm. Uh, you're harder to beat, it seems, at the start of this season. Um, the dream, of course, is to get it right at both ends of the pitch. Yeah. Sometimes you have to sacrifice one mm. for the other as well. Mm. What are you doing to address the fact that you clearly could do with scoring one or two more goals than you are? Yeah. Well, that, that's the, the, the objective, of course, is, is on both, both ends of the pitch, is to be good in both boxes and to, um, to keep clean sheets and to score enough goals to, to, to win games. So there's, there's nothing new there. Um, I think that um, y y the question's right. You, you know, we, we would like to be not, not just scoring more goals. I think we would like to be creating more, more chances and giving ourselves more opportunity to score goals. I think uh, I spoke quite openly both with, with, with the media and with the guys, I think the last few games that we've played, we've, we've played some good football and we've gotten some really good areas and, and making that more, play more productive has, has been something that we, we're all challenging ourselves selves with because I think I feel like we have the, the talent and, and the, um, the know-how in, in the team. Easier said than done, you know, it is, it is at both ends of the, of the, of the pitch are the hardest part of the game. And, um, you know, we... Um, we just got to keep going. I, I, you know, I think we've got to take a step back and go look at look at how many new players we've got uh, again, and and that takes time to build connections and and relationships, and um, no more so than at, at the top end, top end of the pitch. So um, yeah, it's something that um, we we definitely are continuing to work on. Well, we're working on all aspects of our game. We have to because, like I said, we've got so many new players, and we're trying to integrate everybody in to, to become a settled. A settled team, and and, and that that's the that's the hope you see by the last team that we put out. How many new players uh, are playing? So um, so it's still uh, we're still a situ in that situation where um, we're we're building hopefully a team and something. As I always say, trying to pick up as enough points along the way. I think there's been some some good parts of our play in, in our games, but but at times you can see that we are a new a new team, and it's spell you look at the start of the. The second half against against Brentford, we, we we didn't get going, and I think that's just a little bit of um, lack of togetherness, and and well, that comes over time, um, and um, that's just the process that, that that we're in. So we're trying to balance all of these things off. Um, you normally find that if you sort one thing out, then there's a question about something else, the trade-off, 
Um, and um, we'll continue with our work and our, and our process, but really happy with the players and, and their engagement. The guys, obviously, that have had opportunities, the guys that have had mixed opportunities. And um, uh, I've said quite often, I've seen a real uptake in... I've never had a problem with the, the, the uh, levels of effort and, and intensity in training, but I've definitely seen an improvement in, in, in quality and, um, and uh, competition as well. And I think that's good. And um, what we need to do is use that wisely and, and make sure we take the best bits of that in, into games, which is what we're trying to do. Uh, you never never lost to Crystal Palace in the Premier League, held them to a draw on the last day of last season. Different context, of course, to all of that, yeah. to now. Yeah, especially team. the ones 20 odd years ago. D yeah. Different players. <laughs> Not many of them available anymore. Uh, uh, of course. Yeah. Um, but both teams. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, but they've started well. Yeah, yeah. And they've they come yeah. off the back of a really yeah. good result. Mm. Uh, so how do you approach them? Well, for, yeah, I've got so much respect for, for Roy Hodgson, who, who, who um, obviously I met for the first time. Last, um, last at the end of last last season, and um, um, you know uh, what a job again he's he's, do, he's done and is doing since he's gone back there. So so we know that that is a, a huge factor in what you're coming up against, and um, you know similar to to even the game we played last against Brentford, players that have been there a long time that really know each other, and uh, and you can see that in their game, um, and they have players that can make a difference. Um, they might have a few missing. We'll have a few missing. So you know there'll be, um, I don't think any advantages or disadvantages there. Um, um, but what I do know is you can see that Crystal Palace has a, a you know, a, a good support and or great support with the atmosphere that's there in the stadium at South Park, and we've got to handle that as well as the team that they are, which is one that, as you said, is is got a brilliant result last week and. Um, We'll, we'll want to build on that and we've got to do our best to stop that and impose our game. Two teams that are actually really quite hard to beat. R Roy's style seems to be that way. He's built a four, it's his 400th game as a manager, by the way, in the Premier League. Yeah. Uh, that takes some doing, doesn't it? But but they're hard to beat. A bit like you, you could cancel each other out a little bit, couldn't you? What sort of a game you're expecting? Well, well I don't know. Like, first of all, respect to that. 400 games in, in the Premier League. Um, take, take some doing that. You know, so a huge amount of respect um, for, for, for that. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure about the, the, the cancelling out. They, they, they're a very dangerous team. And, you know, you, even seeing the, the game they played against Aston Villa, which they lost, they could have won. Um, or certainly had chances. Villa, Villa obviously playing really well. Um, and, um, you know, they, they, they are a dangerous team and they have obvious strengths and, and players that have made a difference for for them for for more than a little while. So we're aware of it, um, but I also um, know and think that we have to believe in ourselves and believe in the things that we're doing. Like I said, there's been some really good signs in some of, some of the parts of our game and some of the, the phases in the games that we've, performances that we've put in. And we want to try and build on that and improve. And if we do, we give ourselves a chance of, of getting a positive result, which in the end is what we want. And you're going away from home, but Obviously, you've got rid of that statistic and, and people like me bringing it up all of the time mm. last season about the away results. Uh, yeah. But has it changed a little bit, the atmosphere? Has it rid you of a psychological barrier that you've got that out of the way? Yeah, well, first, away? first of all, I have no problem with, with the, asking them questions. You're quite, quite right. It's, a, it's an obvious question to ask because of how, how it went last year. So there's never any problem uh, with that. You have to own everything that you, that you do, good, good and, and not, not so good. Um, I wouldn't say that... Um, you know, we've only won one game away, and it was an important win, of course. And um, yeah, we've played better, and and maybe should have, we will give ourselves a chance of picking up more points than, than what we did. You look at the, the Man United game and some of the d decisions and parts of the Arsenal and um, uh, City game. Um, but um, but that's gone now, and you know, if, the, the, if anybody's thinking, oh, okay, we're okay now away from home, then that's the. Uh, that's the time where you know this league hits you hard. So we we know that um, we are again going to going into a really tough place against a really um, dangerous team who are doing well, and we've got to be more than ready for it. But you know, if we think anything different to that, then like I said, it, it won't be the right thing. Brilliant. Thanks, Thank Ivan. Thanks. Good luck, mate. Thank you. Hey, Charlie. How are you? <coughs> oh,
Sorry to drag up the VAR thing again, um, but one of the things that I keep hearing discussed all week is should it be scrapped? Should it be paused for the time being until it can be implemented properly? I just wonder where the you well where you stand on it so far as are we reaping the benefits mm. enough of having VAR involved in the sport at the moment? Um, well, I don't think it will be scrapped. Um, so if it, and if that's the case, then I think we've got to um, continue to accept that it's part of our game, um, with the hope that. Um, you know, we can make it the best the best it could be. And if there's talk of um, the automated system that we, we saw this week in, in, the, in the Champions League and World Cups, et cetera, et cetera, if there's them discussions, like I said in, in the previous questions with, with, with Dan, um, you know, we, we've... OK, we'll moan and complain like the next club because that's just the, the nature of competition and standing up for yourself and... Um, and, and that's how it should be as long as it's done or it doesn't cross the line of, of disrespect um, but um, like I said we, we'll be standing up for ourselves and we'll be, if things don't go away we'll be, we'll be um, saying so but I think once you take a step back you've got to try and help the processes as much as you can and they've asked for that with, with feedback and we do our best I hope we get heard you know um, and if we do then hopefully that can help with with education and improving and um, and and just get to a level where we're not having talking points like like this and what we saw last last week and um, that's the obvious one but I think there's there's other things as well so um, let's just hope that through communication and learning that it that it gets better I do think the Liverpool situation hopefully sits alone um, uh, or aside from from other developments of of where VAR can go. Um, but on, on that other side of just generally getting better, I think we, we've got to try and feed back as best we can with the hope that it's heard and, and you know, taken into trying to improve. Does how you approach it um, vary somewhat perhaps to other managers because of what your dad did? VIR definitely wasn't around when, <laughs> when he was <laughs> refereeing. Um, not, not many tallies were, I think. To, so. <laughs> Officiating in general. Yeah, perhaps. no, no, it's not something... Uh, I bet he has a view on it, but um, but no, it's not, not not something I've thought about, to be honest. I can I ask you about Lee Wood? I know you, you and him have a, yeah. a relationship. He's um, obviously fighting big fight this weekend. Yeah. It's very much Wood, Warrington, Nottingham Leeds, mm. Forest Leeds United, if mm. you will. Um, have you spoke to him? Uh, what, what's your message to him? Going to the yeah, fight? I speak to him a lot. Yeah, I speak to him on a, on a regular basis. Um, yeah, first of all, it is a great great fight, isn't it, with, with the two fighters and then the support of where they come from two um, uh, big cities and passionate cities. Likewise with the football clubs, two great football clubs. Obviously we, we're all Forest and he's all, all Leeds United and they'll be getting behind him, we'll be getting behind Lee. Um, so that adds to it, there's no doubt about that. We, as always, wish him well. We've, we've, we're right behind him and, and um, it's, it's, it's brilliant to personally know him because I know the work that he does and um, the processes that he goes to to be in the champion that he is, and um, and I hope he can deliver when it counts counts again. So um, he knows he's got the football club and the city behind him, and um, I'm sure now he's he's focused on on um, on getting the job done. And um, whatever happens, look forward to seeing him next week, and um, nothing will change with our relationship, and, and that will continue. What do you admire the most about the way that he dedicates himself to his his craft? Exactly that, to be fair, you know, through my, my dealings, I say dealings, my, um, I've got quite friendly with him, to be fair, and, and it's been pretty mutual. I think we've, we've both helped each other, and I know nothing about boxing, but um, I do know a little bit about um, trying to prepare for a performance and, and goal setting and, and, you know, what it might take to win. And, you know, we've definitely shared some, some views and some experiences is on that. Um, I, I love his intrigue into the into the the process behind the performance. Uh, I, I said in in the week on something else that um, when the first time I really met him at the training ground, he, the, the amount of time he spent with the analysts and the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. You know, some people would come in and just want to meet the players and and watch training. And he, of course, that he watched training, but you know, he spent all day um, really interested in every part of of performance, and you could see that his mind was intrigued that he might be able to get something from it and I think that's what real winners do 
And, and I've been the same with, with him, really interested in how he prepares for fights and the detail that he goes into. Um, so um, he's, he's, he sacrifices everything. You can see that personally, professionally, to give himself every opportunity of, um, of winning and he knows why he wants to win. And that's his motivation and that's for him to, to say, not me. But he knows why he wants to win and then he, he goes into how he gets there and um, that's something that we can share with some of the work we do here. So, yeah, I, I, I love the fact that uh, um, I know him like I do and some of the players will say the same as well. Brilliant that he's uh, um, a big red for us through and through. And, uh, you know, um, we really, really wish him well to do the business again. Appreciate the time. We're going to get you, if he ever does fight here, carry his belt out on the, on the ring wall. Let's, uh, let's get sat there out the way first. <laughs> Crystal Palace nice. for me. <laughs> Jake. Hey, Jake. Hi, Steve. You OK? Um, just a couple for me. Just wanted to ask about um, one of the summer signings in particular. Um, there's a few things being written this week about Andre Santos. Just mm. wanted to find out how he's been performing for you in training. Yeah, good. In yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously a really good young player. Had a really good chat with... With Chelsea actually this week, um, didn't didn't realise that some stuff had been been written about him. I think, um, it, like I've said before, there's um, a lot of new players here, and and we're really trying to get the balance right uh, in integrating all the players at the right time, um, while trying to perform as best we can in every single game to get the results that 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 we want, and that's a real process. Um, and you know, with young players, sometimes it it, it can. It can take um, longer than, than others to um, to settle in. I'm not saying that, that he, he's not. Um, it's just um, circumstantial um, at the moment in some of the games. Like, for example, Brentford could have been a really good game for him to come, come off the bench. Then we go down to the, the, uh, the, the 10 men and he wasn't feeling too well on the side. So um, that went against him because he was definitely in our thinking of, of, of a change. Um, but it didn't work out that way because, like I said, because of how, how, we, how he's feeling and the um, uh, the red card. So a little bit of bad luck as well, but um, but really enjoying working with him and, and seeing him in training and um, yeah, we continue with that process. Okay, so, and just finally for me, of course, there's a, um, there's a big game happening here at the City Ground this weekend, Forest Women taking uh, yeah, Derby yeah. Women. Uh, just yeah. Want, yeah, I wanted to get your thoughts on that and the growth of the women's game and the integration of the Forest Women team into the, to, into the club as a whole. Yeah, well, I know there's been a lot, lot of emphasis from, from uh, everybody at the club to, to uh, improve everything around our, our, our female game, our team as well. And um, I, know, I know that the owner's uh, keen and you can see that the, the, the support around the infrastructure is really proved and rightly so. We're a Premier League club and you know, we, we, we want to act like that in every part of the, of the club. So, um, so great game on, on, on the weekend and, and one I'm sure that the, the, the girls are ready for. And um, yeah, let's, uh, let's hope we, we can all get some good results on, on the weekend. Thanks, Cross. Thank you, Steve. Thank you.